Hi everybody, it's Nancy Hernandez. Welcome back. I don't know if most of you know, but I live in Riverside, California. I live in the county of Riverside. And I'm excited to introduce you to somebody that I'm excited to be the supervisor of the county of Riverside. And I'm talking about Jose Benina. And he's focused about education. Do you know he was a professor here in Riverside? Elementary professor? middle school and high school. Do you know he graduated here at UCR? This is the home. He did all their stuff, but he's coming back to build the educational here higher. And to be honest, I moved here in Riverside when I was nine and I didn't feel like I had the great knowledge education that I had to, that I had, should have versus other counties. But this guy is gonna bring this to life because he's focused about education. Who doesn't, right? I mean, saying, I mean, telling. He's the man, and he's the one. So I'm gonna send you a show you event that was occurred on Wednesday, March 29. We're celebrating Jose Medina's birthday and also celebrating his campaign. And I, of course, I attended there. And I'm going to show you a little clip what he said, what this is about. So hopefully you have his vote and gain more knowledge. Remember, education is very important. So check it out. See yourself, do your research, and vote. So thank yous. First, let me thank my wife, Linda. She's always there with me who let me go to Sacramento for 10 years to represent this city, this area, the 61st Assembly District. Thank you, Linda. Her family's here, I wanna recognize them as well. Fedegoso family, Alice, Linda Bond, her brothers, my sister-in-laws, her sisters. Thank you for coming all the way from Anaheim to be here this evening. Others to thank. Thanks to Vicky and John Medina, the owners of Zacatecas, restaurant, for opening up the restaurant, for all the workers here, for the waitresses, the cooks, who have done such a job, nice job of having us here this evening. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone from Zacatecas Restaurant. Again, the Medinas. Uh, my brother, John. My brother, Bill. It is, as everyone has said, heartwarming to see so many of you here elected officials, uh, former students, poly students, former staff. Thank you to all my staff, to my staff, my former staff in the assembly, and those who have gone on to others. This event would not have happened without you. So thank you, all of you, Caesar, Esther, Lachey, Aaron. Anybody else? <laughs> thank you to all my staff. You know, there are so many of you here. I think that's just because I've been here a long time. I've been here now over 50 years, over 50 years when I left Purdue University to drive across the United States to come to Riverside to attend UCR, a place that I had never seen, a, a city that I had never visited, a campus that I had never been to. But when I got to UCR, I knew I was home because of many of the folks that are here today. <clears throat> Enrique, Alfredo, Ophelia, all of you. A Latino community that I had not had the, the privilege to experience at Purdue University. At Purdue University, we were 50 Latinos out of 28,000 students. And when I came to UCR, we were 300 students, 300 Latino students at UCR at the time. Riverside changed my life. Riverside afforded me the opportunity to have a home. So I thank so many of you who go back, some of you 50 years back, for being here with me to have supported me every step of the way. And I'm looking at those folks right now who were with me when I first ran 1998 for the Harupa Unified School Board. Woo! 
the Mecha students, Alfredo, Stella, the Mecha students who we organized again, the United Farm Workers. And we had the pleasure of seeing CESA here in Fairmont Park. So that experiences have never left me, have never left me. Those were the formative experiences of my life. And it is good that we are reminded of those experiences here tonight as we are gonna celebrate the birthday of Cesar Chavez yes. and what he taught us to care more about others than ourselves, to be grounded in service to others. And it is such a privilege then to have Eliseo who did so much work for the United Farm Workers. Eliseo, I think as Alfredo said, left California to go to Chicago at age 19. He maybe didn't know where Chicago was, but he led the boycott of grapes in Chicago and was very successful. I met Eliseo in 1996 when I was a delegate at the Democratic National Convention. I was wearing a t-shirt of the PBS series Chicano that had just come out in 1996. And I said, Eliseo, when I teach Chicano studies at my high school poly, let's hear it for all the poly folks in the house. All the poly machistas. And when, when I would show the PBS series, I would stop it at Eliseo Medina. And I would tell my class, there's my cousin Eliseo. <laughs> so I shared that story with Eliseo when I met him in Chicago in 96. And Eliseo said, no, you're not my cousin, you're my brother. And Eliseo and I have been great friends since then. It was an honor to march with Eliseo at the front of the march in Sacramento with California Faculty Association. Is California Faculty Association here this evening? Thank you for being here, CMA. Eliseo led that march. Eliseo led that march in Sacramento, and I hope it made a difference to the faculty of our CSUs. Eliseo was there. Eliseo fasted in the White House, in front of the White House. Eliseo fasted in front of the White House for 21 days. Himself? 22. 22. <laughs> My bad. 22 days he fasted, went without food, to bring attention to the undocumented in the United States. Eliseo called on us to fast with him. But he didn't call on us to fast for 22 days. He only called on us to fast for three days. And I did that, along with some of my colleagues in Sacramento. And I'll tell you, when I broke that fast of only three days, that fish that I had in LA never tasted so good. There is no one that I can think of in California who most embodies the principles of Cesar Chavez than my good friend, Eliseo Medina. Let's hear it for Eliseo. And I am glad that my birthday almost coincides with Cesar's birthday. And every year I get to celebrate my birthday just two days before Cesar's birthday. And I know that we'll see a lot of you uh, at the Latino Network breakfast on Friday at the Marriott where we celebrate Cesar's birthday. I, I will keep this short. There are so many of you to thank. The people who came up here in front, Ophelia, Rose Mays, my sister, Ophelia, mi hermana. So many of you, I could go down the line. I'm looking at all of you you know, and name you all by name, but we would be here all night, and I think some of you might want to dance later tonight because <laughs> we got the DJ. But I need to thank all of you and point out the power that is in this room, the power that is in this room to make change. And sometimes we are not as aware of what that power is. We are not as aware of what the power that we have 
But we learn from Eliseo, Dolores Huerta, and Cesar Chavez, that sometimes the strongest or the most powerful are not the ones that win. Sometimes the person or that has lesser resources, when they organize, can win. And I think that is the kind of election that we have to wage in this election. We have a long ways to go, but we have the power in numbers. We have the power in numbers. We have the power in having the right on our side. And I call on all of you, and you are here today, to say that we can make a difference. And I was very proud to be with Demo Figueroa, Alfredo's brother, on that night in Des Moines, Iowa, when I got to see our future president, then Senator Barack Obama, say, and they said this day would never come. When he won the primary in Des Moines, Iowa, and then went on to win the presidency, being the first African-American to be president of this United States. And as he said that, they said this day would never come. So he borrowed from Dolores Huerta. He borrowed from Dolores Huerta who said, si se puede. Yes, yes. And he translated that to, yes, we can. Yes. And we translated that to the presidency of the United States of America. So if, if we take the lessons from Dolores, from Cesar, and any sale, we can make difference here. For 100 years, there was not a person of color on the Riverside County Board of Supervisors. But now in 2024, we can again make history. I ask you for your support in electing me the next supervisor in the first supervisorial district. Thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Thank you all for your support. We have a long ways to go, lots to do. I hope everyone has filled out, given me your name, your email, maybe leave me something behind. <laughs> <laughs> we have a long ways to go. But let's continue what we have started so many years ago and continue to fight for what is right continue to fight for change. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all of you. Supervisor of the